Our presentation is on the importance of pharmacoeconomics in healthcare system and patient outcome, presented by Han and Brandon. Pharmacoeconomics and its impact on pharmacy. The U.S. healthcare system is unable to provide adequate, adequate care for all this general population. About 15% of the population is uninsured, and the main reason is high cost. Applying pharmacoeconomics can help the system to prioritize treatment and provide affordable care insurance. Incorporating these pharmacy services into the treatment plan can help alleviate the overall healthcare spendings and other issues. Evidently, pharmacoeconomics plays an important role in providing comprehensive facts about a medication such as cost, effectiveness, benefits, and granted quality. Due to our economic system and limitations of pharmacoeconomic analysis, we fail to regulate reasonable medication price. One obvious example is EpiPen. With strong need for supply, Mylan was thrilled to charge excessive amounts for their patent product, increasing their price to approximately 600% since 2007. There are many factors that contribute to medication price inflation, including prolonged wait time for generic drug approval, valid reason to extend patents, and increase demands and decrease in competition. Medication price inflation indeedly affects the whole healthcare system, negatively impacts patients and government fundings, yet making positive profits for pharmaceutical companies. Without proper regulation to ensure drug safety and price management, medication price could increase uncontrollably, undermining effectiveness even with undiscovered adverse effects. Pharmacoeconomics evaluates various dimensions of pharmaceutical products and services to ensure reasonable charge using different measurements. These measuring methods set guidelines in making therapeutic decisions, medication formulary weighting its benefits, cost, and safety. There are four main methodologies assessments to evaluate a pharmaceutical products. They include cost-effective analysis, cost-utility analysis, cost-benefit analysis, and cost-minimization analysis. The combination of various assessments is used to determine population-based decision. With limited resources, various interests, and growing demands, each analysis has its advantages and disadvantages in applying to particular decision. However, evaluating a product in multiple layers provides invaluable information to develop general guidelines to unify decision-making competence and improve public policy. Pharma pharmacoeconomic analysis suggests that incorporating pharmacy services could potentially lower overall healthcare spendings. One such way is through preventative care. An example where pharmacists can play a role in boosting primary care and prevention was conducted in a study published in the July-August 2014 issue of the Journal of the American Pharmacists Association. The study showed how Medicare annual wellness visits could be a way to allow pharmacists gain greater involvement in patient care, thus increasing adherence for patients. Another way is through medication review and reconciliation, or MTM sessions. However, there is a problem pharmacists face when it comes to medication therapy management sessions. They often ask themselves, is it worth my time? The Center for Medicare and Medicaid Services does not recognize pharmacists as healthcare providers. Normally, a physician can carry out this 30-minute MTM session and be reimbursed. However, in the same amount of time, a physician can administer two epidural steroid injections, resulting in a major source of revenue for the clinic, according to the article published by the American Pharmacists Association. When pharmacists are able to sit down with a patient and go over their medications, this improves adherence. It goes on to state in the article that medication non-adherence costs the healthcare system as much as $290 billion a year, according to a report by the National Community of Pharmacists Association, thus making it important for patients to receive the proper information and counseling about medications they are prescribed before they take them. Another way to potentially lower overall healthcare spending is through treatment costs. Treatment cost is a big issue in the pharmacy field. How can we, as a pharmacy, provide excellent patient care while also making a profit? The answer is through improved utilization. In an article from Healthcare Financial Management Association, they provide an example of a four-hospital system that achieved almost $2 million in pharmacy cost savings. The article states a utilization team was assigned to find the cause of the high-costing medications and find a way to reduce the cost. The team ended up finding certain medications were being prescribed to patients more than 10 times the cost of a clinically therapeutic equivalent drug. 
In conclusion, we see that pharmacoeconomics provides benefits to the healthcare system in various aspects. It provides insight on how best pharmacists can get involved in primary and preventative care, the importance of medication review, and patient education. It minimizes unnecessary therapeutic treatments, which may increase the effectiveness of other therapies. Pharmacoeconomics also plays a role in cost reduction. It helps to minimize treatment costs and provide insight on pharmaceutical pricing. More studies should be done to optimize the use of pharmacoeconomics.